So over the last 10 years, the Journal of Vascular Surgery, Venous and Lymphatic Disorders, has become the premier venous journal. It has attained an impact factor of 4.19. This achievement is in large part due to the tireless time and energy of the Editors-in-Chief. Today, I am delighted to have the past and present Editors-in-Chief for the JVS VNL to discuss the past, present, and future of the journal. Dr. Sadawi is the professor and Louis B. Salts Chair in the Department of Surgery at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Dr. Glavitsky is a Chair Emeritus at the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine, Division of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery at the Gonda Vascular Center. And Dr. Ruth Bush is a Professor of Vascular Surgery and the Associate Dean for the Educational Affairs of the John Seeley School of Medicine at the University of Texas, MB, in Galveston, Texas. Welcome to all three of you. So, Dr. Sadawi, how did you come up with the idea of starting the JVS VNL? Well, actually, it came out of necessity. Um, what happened when Bruce Perlin and I became editors in 2009? Uh, at the time, the number of submissions to the JVS were skyrocketing. And at the time, there was a limit on the number of pages uh, per uh, contract between the SVS and Elsevier, which, uh, uh, which is the publisher of the journal. And we got a little bit to a crossroad where we are seeing an excellent papers that we cannot include in the journal because of the limitation uh, of the number of pages. So I would say late 2009, early 2010, we started thinking about, well, how are we going to deal with that issue? Uh, how are we going to free up uh, pages in order, to, um, in order to publish more and more worthy papers in the journal? At the time also in the contract, uh, there were uh, four supplements a year. So even with the pages of these supplements, uh, we didn't have, we believed at the time, enough pages to publish all the good journals. So we were faced with that decision and what, how are we going to handle it, right? So um, in the beginning, we said to ourselves, uh, well, uh, how about if we have another journal, uh, but what we're going to put into it? Because if you have a new contract for another journal, you get additional pages for that new journal, right? So we started thinking about deciding what to include in that journal. So we thought, well, let's move all the case reports out. And at the time, um, the online stuff um, was not really very uh, used at the time, so only on online journal. So we said to ourselves a, a real journal with only case reports, uh, it's just not gonna work well because uh, what's gonna happen with it, the impact factor is gonna be almost nothing basically. And that was not a good thing to add to the, po the, the, the uh, portfolio of publication of the SVS. And then, we thought, well, how about if we split the endovascular everything and the open surgical everything, whether it's venous or arterial, and have two journals, one endovascular and one open. And we all, we all, at the time, we were concerned that we didn't know how these two journals are going to move, which one is going to have a higher impact factor, and which one uh, we're going to use as the primary journal. Uh, is it the endovascular one? We say that stays the, J the JVS, the regular JVS, or the open one. And then we thought, well, how about venous access, moving the venous access new journal? We counted the number or the venous access papers submitted to the JVS, and we're really not there in order for them to have their own journals. And then we thought about the venous and lymphatic, and we looked and asked, Actually, at that time, there was no dominant uh, venous and lymphatic journal. So we thought, we thought that that would be really a good way to go about it. Interestingly enough, I get an email 
from Tom Wakefield, who was in the leadership of the AVF, American Venus Forum. And he told me that he would like to discuss it, it, an issue with me. Uh, and uh, we were going to a meeting, I believe, in Chicago in the convention uh, center, I think American College of Surgeons or in San Francisco, I don't remember exactly. So we actually um, talked with each other and we took a cab from the hotel to the convention center and we started talking. And he said that uh, the American Venus Forum uh, is interested in having a Venus Journal. I said, well, that's interesting. You're, you're thinking about that because actually that's exactly what we are in the process of doing. He said, what's your thought? So I described to him the whole process. And I said to him, I said, look, the AVF, it was founded in 89 by 20 vascular surgeons who were really focused on venous disease. So maybe the AVF and the SVS should come together on that journal. But I said, look, I'm only the editor. That's a discussion that needs to be had with the SVS. To make the story short, uh, we put together a proposal that was approved by um, uh, uh, the council. At the time, there was no strategic board of the SVS approved by the council. And um, at the same time, uh, I started working with Elsevier, our representative there, and started pulling for me all the bibliometrics on different uh, uh, types of papers and all that stuff, because we really wanted this journal to move up and to become the main Venus journal in uh, the specialty. And I think, uh, from what you just mentioned and the new impact factor under uh, the Peters here uh, actually showed that that could happen. Uh, so um, we proceeded with it and uh, we actually uh, published uh, the first issue in January of 2013. And initially what we said that we will start with four issues in a year, every quarter, and then we'll move it to an issue every two months, so by monthly issue. The other topic that we were very interested in is actually when we have to apply to get an impact factor for the journal. So um, I had a conversation, I remember vividly with folks from Elsevier and said, well, if you're going to publish four issues a year, then you have a full year, four issues, and then we, we can apply. And it's going to take a couple of years. It may not uh, be approved from the first application. And uh, so we went ahead, went through the process after we published four, four issues, and we got our impact factor uh, that you, um, uh, that you uh, actually uh, uh, mentioned where it is now. Now, the reason there are, there were other reasons also why we went ahead with the Venus Journal to relieve the main JVS is uh, that these, these issues are related to that SVS when it started, it started based on venous disease. So in, 19, in the 1960, the first uh, presidential uh, address by Alton Oxner in Atlantic City, the meeting was for the SVS, the first meeting, the first presidential address was on venous thrombosis. And th th that, so that's the history of uh, basically uh, SV, uh, of, uh, 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 of uh, SVS. And actually that was not in the 60s, it was 1947, uh, the, first, the first presidential address by Alton Oxner, who was the first president of society. And again, the meeting was in Atlantic City. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one reason. The second reason, that we decided to do the Venus Journal was actually the burden of venous disease. So if you look even around the world, I mean, there were million and million and million of, of people uh, with uh, venous disease. And actually, just before we started thinking about what journal we can have in 2008, the Surgeon General actually at the mm -hmm. time uh, issued a call to action on for the prevention of venous thromboembolism. So we said, what would be a better way than to start a journal for 
the main vascular society under the banner of the Journal of Vascular Surgery and call it the Journal of Vascular Surgery, Venous Lymphatic and Wound Care. That was the origin, uh, original title of the journal that we actually uh, thought about. But then as we were discussing that whole thing uh, uh, with multiple people, uh, we felt that maybe keep uh, taking the wound care out of the lineup will be the way to go. And also Elsevier said that would be a very long title of a journal. And when we looked at the number of wound care papers submitted to the JVS were really not many at all. So we decided to stick the Journal of Vascular Disease, Venus and Lymphatic. And again, the first issue was in 2013 and um, uh, January 2013. So that's how uh, this whole uh, journal uh, basically has started. Amazing. Absolutely. That's a great story. It really is. I mean, there's so much rich history and, and interesting facts about it. When you started the journal, what challenges did you have and how did you overcome those challenges with the JVS VNL? I mean, you're starting a whole new a whole new journal. Yeah, it, it's it, look, we had to create everything. This is the first journal that I personally started from, uh, let's call it from scratch, right? So you got to think about the editorial structure. You got to think about obviously the impact factor and obviously the worry and the concern that this is not going to go anywhere. And if it doesn't go anywhere, it's going to flop. So we were very concerned about these things, but then little by little, as we started studying the issue and the call to action by the Surgeon General and the burden of venous disease, we started feeling much more comfortable about it. So. The original obstacle actually is to convince two parties that this is a good thing to do. One party is obviously the SVS Council, and the second party is Elsevier. And actually, Elsevier uh, uh, very quickly realized that that would be a good thing for them. And the Elsevier representative that worked with us at the time did his own research and actually uh, came back to me and said, you know what, this is a great, great idea. We are interested in it. And when the, uh, the, uh, the publication committee discussed the issue, he actually came with us and presented Elsevier point of view why this would be a good journal. And now let me add one thing. Since we have Peter Klovitsky with us here, he probably does not remember. But in the first issue, uh, Bruce and I put there uh, a, you know, like a very short, brief article why we started the journal, okay? And we asked the president of the SVS and the president of the American Venus Forum to also write a brief piece to put it in the beginning of that journal. And who was the president of the AVF? Rob McLafferty. Who was the president of the SVS? Dr. Klovitsky. So both of them wrote a brief article for us that we put in the first issue from the SVS and the AVF outlining this partnership and outlining the importance again of why to publish just uh, uh, such journal. And uh, uh, so, that's a little bit of an additional history here since we have Dr. Klovitsky here and since he became the editor of the journal after we did. And by the way, as you know, uh, we thought initially uh, to uh, for that uh, what we call daughter journal, uh, which became uh, the, the JVS vascular and lymphatic. And you remember I told you we thought in, st uh, in the beginning to start a journal for case report which we didn't at the time, but when when the online journals became more popular, as you know, we started actually Journal of Vascular Surgery case report, uh, which again, uh, after that, when uh, Peter Klovitsky uh, and Peter Lawrence became the editors, they added at the end and technical uh, tricks and stuff like that. So, so we ended up actually starting these two journals. So that's a perfect segue. So Dr. Glavitsky, when you took over, 
you also had certain challenges, and how did you overcome some of those for the JBSVNL? Well, we had uh, challenges. It was interesting to listen to uh, Tony of what he went through with uh, Bruce to create this journal. Uh, I was very excited about uh, the journal from the beginning. Uh, I, I should say, however, that even though uh, McLafferty and I wrote the uh, article at the beginning of issue one, uh, the credit really should go to Rich Cambria and uh, uh, Dr. Raju, because it was during the uh, preceding year that we had all the discussions and uh, both Rob and I uh, were part of it, but the decision was really made by Rich Cambry mm. that we have a Venus journal. I think overall the idea was brilliant because there, there was such a need for the Venus journal. So when we took it over, uh, uh, and also I should say that not only I was excited about the topic and the journal, and we wrote the, the first article. But Tony, if you show us the uh, issue uh, uh, number one, that picture is a patient of mine that yep. I operated, and that is a uh, popliteal femoral transposition. Transposition. Or, or May Husni procedure mm -hmm. that I did uh, one of the patients. So. Uh, uh, again, we were ready for this journal. The, uh, the challenges, well, we obviously wanted to grow the journal. Uh, we already got the journal with an impact factor, which alone was a big deal because uh, the journal started in, uh, in 2013 and uh, in 2015 or early 16, you know, we already had an impact factor of 0.8. Now the challenge was how to move the impact factor of 0.8 up to 4.19. So uh, that is obviously something that took time and we have worked uh, uh, you know, uh, diligently with Peter, but we did a lot of things to change the content and the format and the editorial board. Uh, and, uh, and we got a lot of help from the staff. Carly, uh, very, you were there, I think, from the very beginning. And uh, that's why, you know, the, uh, I, 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 I tell it to everybody that to put a journal, you cannot do anything alone. It's always a, a teamwork and we got so much help from the office uh, that we could continue to grow this journal. So the challenges were the four issues right there. You know, we knew we are going to uh, increase the page numbers. In uh, 2016, uh, we uh, printed four, uh, 540 pages. Uh, the last year of our editorship, we did 1,604 pages. So we had to increase uh, right away, and in the first year, we increased the four issues to six issues. And then we had to grow the editorial board. I just looked at the first uh, issue. We had 27 editors, four women. Uh, the year we finished uh, with Peter Lawrence, we had 60 editors and 20 women. So uh, 33%. I think uh, uh, that uh, that uh, alone was also a process uh, that was uh, important to uh, to uh, pursue. Uh, we made the journal international. We really made a point with Peter Lawrence that wherever we went around the world, we were talking about the journals, and uh, that was also very important. We had. Uh, the year we finished the journal, we had uh, 18 foreign uh, members of the editorial board. And that was very important because we feel really that, that we made this an international journal because it was so important to uh, go out and uh, uh, 
the second and the third the largest number of submissions uh, come from uh, China and Japan. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we had to grow that, but we also did a lot of other things. Uh, fortunately, you know, we did the uh, the um, visual abstract, we did the editor's choice videos, we did the uh, press regular press re releases, audible bleeding uh, uh, reports, uh, we changed the table of content, we changed, the, we added highlights to the articles, and uh, we changed the format of the journals. So I think all, all of this was uh, uh, that something that needed time, uh, and um, uh, I think altogether we were really pleased that we were able to uh, give over uh, Ruth Bush and her team a journal that uh, had an impact factor of 4.19 just 10 years after uh, Tony and Bruce started the journal. So, Dr. Glavitsky, how do you see the JVS VNL progressing forward? Well, I think uh, th this is something obviously that uh, that we are going to learn from Ruth because she uh, takes now the journal forward. Uh, obviously, the first major step is the uh, online only publication. Uh, but, you know, there, there are things to do to increase uh, a, a diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, both in uh, the publications and in the editorial process. Uh, very important is to increase social media activity uh, of the journals. Uh, you need uh, really uh, a very rigorous and, and continue to have a rigorous peer review. You know, it is the peer review to me that makes a journal uh, special. And if we can maintain the tradition of JBS, you know, the quality of the, the uh, reviewers uh, and obviously the editorial board, uh, if we can maintain the quality of the uh, papers, then uh, I don't have any doubt that impact factors are going to continue to soar. Yeah. Uh, if, it, if you don't mind, um, any, let me let me uh, recognize one person, okay, that worked with me and Bruce and worked with Peter Klovitsky and Peter Lawrence, and that's our managing editor, uh, uh, Jessica Brabant. And uh, actually, uh, Jess was <laughs> amazing. Whatever we threw at her, she will just keep on going. And uh, she worked uh, hand in hand uh, uh, with me at the time to get this done. And uh, she worked very hard on the editorial infrastructure and how to move papers because initially um, we had the, the same editorial structure for for both journal vascular surgery and journal vascular surgery uh, venous lymphatic and for that for that purpose also a case report um, but uh, her job was actually to direct papers with me uh, so this is how we moved papers into the JVSVL, and we moved papers into case reports. Uh, and and we, we kept that balance uh, among the three journals. And um, I, just, I just wanted to mention her name because she's, uh, she started actually with uh, Jacques Cronenwet in his mm -hmm. last couple of years. And then when I became editor, I interviewed Jess and uh, I was, I always said to myself, I was so lucky or smart that I decided to have Jess to be the managing editor. And then when Peter um, took her over as the editor in chief, uh, work, she worked with him for um, the whole uh, period. Just uh, she stepped down just before he stepped down from being editor. So to have someone like that for that long period of time, she started with the JBSVL until Again, we have the new editorial team now. So I think it's really important to recognize what uh, Jessica did. Oh, I have to agree with that. And I'm sure that uh, Carly, who was mentored by Jessica, you know, can uh, uh, tell a lot of things. But certainly, you know, our uh, 
our collaboration with Jessica and the entire team in the office was a key to our success. But Dr. Bush, so where do you see the JVS progressing towards? Well, I sort of see that as a, a scary question on, you know, following on the heels of Dr. Glavitsky, Dr. Lawrence, Dr. Sadawi, and, and Dr. Perler. Um, I am very fortunate to have um, uh, been put in this position where I'm not managing, you know, two or four journals. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at one, but I have a great team uh, uh, splitting off all of the uh, daughter journals, if you will, uh, into having their own separate editorial boards, editorial teams, uh, I think has been tremendous and really allowed us to grow and, and focus on venous and lymphatic disease and what we can do. Um, I will shout out for Carly because we talk via email or on the phone several times a week. Uh, Dr. Hingarani, who's our associate editor for diversity, equity, and inclusion for the JVSVL. Dr. Arjun Jaraj, who's the associate editor for reviews and innovations. And then Dr. Anitha Dua, who's assistant editor for social media, all just for the JVSVL. So this is a tremendous team. So I am hoping and I'm hopeful that we can take you know, what we have been given in a great um, position and really move it forward. We do have challenges. We went online only this year, um, but it is, it's a, it's a different year. It's a different generation. Um, we found that only 3% of uh, folks were actually requesting the print only journal uh, in 2022. So 2023, we went electronic only. Um, the website has been improved. The interaction uh, that people can have at the website has been improved. You can sign up for alerts. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. We, uh, Dr. Dua started our Twitter handle last June, and we're sort of in a little bit of a running with cases, uh, the CIT journal, uh, cases, innovations, and techniques, but they do have a little bit younger, uh, more uh, social media uh, savvy uh, editorial board. So we keep going up and down in terms of number of Twitter followers, but um, we were over a thousand within six months very quickly. Um, we want to use that to launch papers, to uh, our visual abstracts, to recognize different authors. Uh, that is how people are interacting uh, with the journal these days is a lot of it is through social media and we recognize that. Uh, Dr. Hingarani, uh, with his focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion has been doing a lot of um, looking at different papers we get from around the world. You said, Dr. Glavitsky, we are an international journal. Over 40 countries submit to the JVSVL. We are the number one Venus and lymphatic journal in the world. Uh, there are a couple of competitors, but they're, they're much lower down. And authors would prefer to publish in the JVSVL. I hope that that stays this way for a long time. Um, so back to Dr. Hingarani, we're now starting our foray into virtual special issues, special online collections of papers uh, that will get published a little bit quicker so that the turnaround time rather than being put in an issue will be uh, faster for the authors to have their work uh, online and available to people. Um, Dr. Hingarani's first virtual special issue is on diversity uh, issues in venous disease. Uh, we have just uh, uh, started working with a gentleman from Chile, one of the American Venus Forum members, uh, Dr. Alvaro Orego, who's going to do a virtual special issue uh, focusing on Latin American uh, issues in venous disease and highlighting Latin American authors. So there's a lot of new directions that we can go. We are looking at our editorial board. Uh, we've done a little bit of um, shuffling around some of the uh, uh, folks who actually were the founding editorial board members uh, have been uh, retired and recognized. And we are 
over 40 percent, I don't remember the exact percentage, but over 40 percent women now uh, with true an international focus. And we will be uh, looking at those numbers uh, in the future. We've scaled down a little bit on the number of editorial board members uh, because we haven't quite decided uh, what the perfect number would be and what the uh, makeup would be. Challenge that we're going to be facing is we will be going uh, totally open access as of January 2024. So this presents its own challenges. Um, I am a fan of open access because I believe science should be available to everybody. And we should be helping and uh, focusing on scientists, vascular surgeons, venous surgeons around the world. So having uh, cutting edge science and uh, practical uh, whether it's an algorithm for uh, venous thrombotic disease or some type of uh, uh, technical um, expertise available, I firmly believe that that should be what our focus is, is to help the practicing surgeon. Um, so yes, there's a lot of challenges. I, I'm a little uh, Nervous about what the future will hold, but I'm very excited about it. And to your point, Dr. Sadawi, with that first issue, Dr. Wakefield sent me the other day uh, his signed editorial board page from that first issue where every uh, board member signed it. Yep, I, I, uh, I have a copy of that actually framed <laughs> on my wall yeah. in my office. Wow. And and uh, uh, yeah, I mean those are those are those are really great memories. Uh, Ruth, let me ask you a question, if you don't mind. Uh, since now, the G the JVSVL is only online journal. There's no print anymore. Is it online open access or just online? So JVSVL is a hybrid journal. So some articles are open access. Okay. Um, uh, some some countries some uh, places will only allow their uh, uh, authors to submit open access, some within the U.S. and, and some abroad. Uh, the others are behind a firewall uh, for mm -hmm. a certain period of time. Peter, you're better at speaking to this than, than I am, uh, but they are uh, behind a firewall for a certain period of time, but they will be fully open access in 2024. Very good. So so uh, you may not know the number, but when we started uh, the JVS uh, case report and we started it open access and we negotiated at the time a very special low price with mm -hmm. Elsevier, the number of submitted uh, case reports dropped from 500 to 350, 355. Uh, so at the time, we really realized that people are somewhat price sensitive, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that even for that very low price, limited the number of submission uh, of case reports. As I understand it now, that's going up, but the, also the price for submission went up, but it's not like a full article because I remember when people wanted to submit to the main JVS, even during our time that was available the price was $2,500 uh, to submit an open access uh, uh, article for the main JVS. So I'm wondering uh, between you and, and Peter, if you have a sense whether open access uh, that you have to pay for is limiting submission to either journal. Well, Do you uh, want to take? Yeah, uh, I can comment that uh, you know, after you saw a decrease for the case report journals, we were actually very surprised to see that the number of submissions uh, continuously increased. Uh, it, this is something that that the uh, uh, publisher and uh, uh, and the editor will have to keep an eye on though for previous year because uh, there are obviously. Uh, you know, international people who 
to uh, have to pay less if they, if they are submitting a paper from uh, uh, countries that uh, don't, uh, you know, have the high standard uh, of living than, than we have here in North America. And uh, LCV is very helpful in this, that uh, the submission uh, price and the uh, publication price will be less for certain countries. Uh, in addition, uh, Ruth is going to have a contingency fund to fund uh, certain papers. Uh, and I think you should fully use it each year because the purpose of that is that you help people who may not be able to uh, uh, you know, pay for the article. But uh, interesting enough, slowly research budgets include publications. Correct, correct. Yeah, so I think I think all of those things um, we are using this year to think about how we would use um, some type of uh, uh, subsidies to help offset some of the charges, whether that is papers that we request, papers we um, that are commissioned by the American Venus Forum or by the Society for Vascular Surgery. Um, we also want to be cognizant, as Dr. Klavitsky said, of, of folks who are from uh, low and middle resource countries. Elsevier uh, does have uh, uh, agreements uh, to help offset those charges. Um, I have to say with the case, case report journal, I am, I am in somewhat encouraged because as Dr. Klavitsky said, they are uh, getting more submissions than any of us uh, for the JBS. And I am hopeful that people want to submit to uh, a top tier journal like the uh, Journal of Vascular Surgery, Venus and Lymphatics because they will get more citations by being in the JBS VL. That will help their work be seen and it will also help the journal as well. Um, I don't know what next year will bring. Um, I am I am cautiously optimistic uh, because of the groundwork that was laid uh, for um, Carly, myself, and Dr. Hingarani coming into the JBSVL. Our prices are they seem a lot, but they're actually lower. Uh, Elsevier, I think, has um, been very cognizant of that. They're lower than many other journals and uh, members of Society for Vascular Surgery and American Venus Forum do get a discount. Uh, if you know, So one of the submitting authors uh, is used, there will be a discount in the charge. That's great. Yeah, and, and uh, I know we're not talking tonight about um, uh, the case report journal, but uh, did it get an impact factor on what it did? Because by, we established it in 2015 and then we stepped down, uh, we published few uh, issues, and then by that time, our term had ended, and then Peter and Peter took it over. So Peter, what, how did the impact factor for that go? It is, it is indexed, it doesn't have an impact factor yet. Oh, okay. okay. But they also, it's interesting because Dr. Smeds, who is the, I've learned a lot from him about social media, he's the editor in chief. So they look at, at, at views, at um, tweets, at other metrics for social media that, because you may not have a citation for a case report, but you're going to have all these people viewing it. And he did some some social media outreach, and you may end up deleting this whole section, Carly, because I don't remember what it was called, but he had tens of thousands of views. Do you remember what that was, Carly? It was astronomical, the number. Yeah, you yeah know, I don't remember. Uh, it, it, that's what's happening now. Uh, that's what's happening now with the social media. People, little by little, are forgetting about science and all that stuff. I mean, whoever give you the wow factor on social media, I get it. And Matt yep. Smith is really excellent about that. <laughs> I, I follow him, I follow him on Twitter and he- Yeah, the wow factor, that's exactly what it is. That Not is impact wow factor. factor, the wow factor. It's the wow factor. So I call it the wow <laughs> factor rather than the impact factor. So 
maybe that's what's happening with this generation and all the social media is moving away from these traditional, you know, the edge index now actually is much more mm -hmm. than than that. So anyways, uh, we, we digressed and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that's OK. Well, you know, Plomex metrics are here to stay and they will be more and more important. I still believe, though, that currently the value of a real journal is the impact factor. So uh, I agree. You know, but but uh, alt metrics and Plumex metrics are, are, you know, becoming very, very important. OK, so on that note, I want to thank all of you for all of the work that you've done and continue to.